Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. This episode of the Mark and Martin's Revolution is brought to you by Vodcast TV, Johannesburg's premier shared podcast studio platform. If you've ever wanted to host your own podcast for yourself or your business, there's simply never been a better place to do it than right here. Visit vodcasttv.com forward slash revolution to get yourself a discount on your first order of a podcast or a podcast series. My guest today is not transgender. Her voice just sounds funny because she's got a cold or flu or tonsillitis or something from Mozambique, which makes it more potent. <laughs> and also the purple hair is just a fashion choice. She's not going to tell you about how non-binary she is. <laughs> it is. Maybe it's Waybeline, Waylene, Birkus. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. A revolution is a fundamental and relatively sudden change in political power. An organization which occurs when the population revolts. This is the Marco Martins Revolution, powered by Vodcast TV. Visit VodcastTV.com for more. Even after that intro, even it's after nice that, to be, yeah. even after that intro, it was a little bit funny. It was a small, 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 small funny. Small. That's the thing about us non-comedians is whenever we're around comedians, we try so hard to joke because yeah. it's the most validating thing in the world. If a comedian's like, "Ah, you funny," then it's like, "Yeah, you see, but even comedians think I'm funny." It's also like a weird thing because like people do like I get it, but it's like my sense of humor is very horrible. So I'm like. If I don't laugh get at, my validation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. like I'm not the sign yeah, of yeah. this is funny. I laugh at, there was a meme or something, like I saw it yesterday and I was crying for like three minutes because it was like this thing in the water, like a sea creature type of thing. And it looked like it was holding a gun, and someone was, and the caption was like the Glock Ness monster. And I That's laughed. Funny, that's though. so that funny. I funny, laughed for like though. five minutes, and I'm like, that's this a is bad not example. A Find another because that's funny. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Okay, one of the things I laugh about that I've laughed about for years, mm. like since I was eighteen. like mm. a preteen. Mm. I find it hilarious. There's an episode of Ed, Ed and Eddie. So. They go into Ed's room. Eddie, Which Ed? Double D, Double D, and Eddie are in Ed's room. He's not there. And then they find Slow like tall Ed. Yeah, they yeah. find like a magazine under his bed, mm. and it just says chicks. So they're thinking it's like gonna be hot girls and stuff. And then they open it, and it's baby chickens. chickens. <laughs> that's funny. I'm like that's so funny. Like mm. this, this is height of comedy. Because it's a show for kids about like sort of teens or preteens, yeah. and then it's like. Oh, the exploration of yes. pornography, but it's like, uh, it's uh -huh. not even like the guy doesn't even do porn right. It's funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and then they had the plank. Oh, yeah. Plank, which plank, plankton, plank. whatever. Plank. No, that's from SpongeBob. Plankton is from SpongeBob. I plank don't know, is cartoon just things. From... I'm too old. It's been too many years since yeah. I did cartoon things. Also, I only watch French cinema. <laughs> <laughs> you only watch French cinema. <laughs> Margot's just, just like plank. the most pretentious guy. Yeah. Ever. I take photos on film. On film. <laughs> <laughs> like I walk around with like my yeah. old vintage camera on film. Yeah. And then you you have to, I don't know why those cameras have to be shot like this all the time. Yes. Like no one takes, like everyone takes a photo like this with mm. any camera. And then like smartphones, you, you hold yeah. out and you've got a screen and you do this. But those ones, they have to, like everything has to be shot like this. Everything. Because it's. You, you look like your Tinder bio says sopiosexual. Is so sexual. It's people who are like attracted to people's minds. Oh, isn't it sapiosexual? Oh, whatever. Mm. I don't know. I'm okay. A, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not like any a, I'm attracted to I'm human beings yeah. for their intelligence yeah. or their um, you know, their personality. Yeah. I, I'm attracted to people's intelligence and personality. I don't condone to any of that stuff. I'm only attracted to hot people. Just hot people. Just hot like, people. Just be good looking. Just be good don't looking. I'm not asking else. anything don't, else. Don't put. Don't put a joke in your bio either. No, don't. there's this, it, it's, it's so true. Like, I hope any men out there is hearing. Give men, give men some advice um, for how to set up their team. Especially if, you, if you're macking on So your first, first of all, mm -hmm. what I've heard from what, I, what women see, because I've never been on Tinder. And then even if I were on Tinder, I wouldn't see what men are men putting are in their bios, right? But what I've heard is that you have to have you 
fishing, like holding a fish that you caught. No, that's the opposite of what you should be having. Yeah, but that's what they all have. Yeah, that's what they have. Or my worst one is it's your Tinder profile. Mm. Why is there a picture of you with eight of your friends? Because they're the least good looking of the of eight. The so it's like, like, I'm going to fool you. But then <laughs> also it's like, now I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, but it's fine. At least you're in the door. You might feel guilty. No. Maybe that's the thing. That's the thing, that's yeah. Psychology. No, a lot right. of guys that's try and guilt move. you yeah. into stuff. And I'm like, mm, doesn't work on me. Like I said, once again, I'm only attracted to hotness. So, so mm. I spoke to this guy. He, he was very hot. Um, but he kept trying to make me laugh. And he was very bad at it. And at one point, I was just like, shh, 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 shh don't speak. <laughs> no speaking. You, you're ruining this for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I wonder what I would do. I think it would just look like my Instagram. Yeah. You know what the thing is? I think that my podcast and my Instagram would be really bad for my dating life. Because mm -hmm. imagine having to hear my rants. Like anyone who listens to this podcast knows I can go on a rant. Yeah. Imagine having to actually deal with a rant. Like I was always confused why my ex left me because we were together for so many years and we had a house or whatever. And mm -hmm. then like when you reflect on and your you life and, and then you're like, like, sometimes you'll catch yourself mid rant and it'll just be like, oh, oh this, is why. this is why. This is why. It's weird. I can't it's, change me. It's, yeah, you can't change your eyes. It's a very mm. weird thing. Even like with me with stand up, I used to try and hide, not hide it, but I would be a bit more cooler if I was liking someone or whatever. But now I'm just like, hey, stand up is my life. My comedy is my life. Um, I will be respectful. I'm very respectful of people in my personal life. Like I won't take your business to stage or something really personal between us. Um, but saying that I'm not allowed to tell any joke or anything about you or like that type of thing, it's not going to work. It's what I do. Like my stand-up is my life. Also, that's an insecurity, right? Yeah, it's it like is. like deal with your stuff. It is. It's you funny should be, You should be prepared to be made fun of. I think that's one of the biggest things. That and made fun of like is even a weird term. What I would say is, because there are comics who really like to pick on people and make them feel bad. I don't condone on that. But there's a, that's why I like the word banter. There's a difference between mm. banter and us taking something you did funny mm. and me not making you feel, I'm not trying to make you feel bad about it. We're laughing about it together. As mm. soon as I'm laughing at you, that's the problem. I think that, yeah, I think that there's a, there's always going to be an issue there where comedians have comedic license, mm. right? So it's like comedians should be rightfully the people in society who are able to say anything because it's not serious. It's a joke. The problem with that is when you give human beings license, some people will put themselves yeah. in a position to say fucked up things yes, yes. just because they've got license, license to. So they seek out. It's the same reason why there's so many priests who are pedophiles and school teachers and principals, whatever. Like literally is these people mm. seek out what they can and they put themselves in positions where they can manipulate that situation to get what they want. And I think that's the same thing is that you'll have some people who are malicious and they get into comedy because exactly. they want that license yes. to say fucked up things. I and then when you challenge them on the things that they say. Oh, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. And the, the most heinous part of all of that, because it's one thing for you to say fucked up things mm. and whatever. And it's like, fuck you, you're an asshole. Everyone moves on with their life. The problem is that it takes away license from actual <laughs> comics who are who are actually making a joke. So then everyone has to be sensitive about what they can joke about because of some people who manipulated that comedic license, who manipulated joking to be able to say fucked up things. And I think that's the worst part is that that's what comedy's always been since the Greek times is that it's been a political commentary yeah. it's a, or a social commentary rather about, about society. And we point out fucked up things and then you laugh about it. That's what I think comedy really is. So I, I remember even, have, like, it's a good you brought it up because here's my view. I don't like when people say there's certain things you can't joke about. Like I said, I definitely believe you can joke about anything, but then someone will go like, oh, you can't make jokes about rape or AIDS or something that, like, comedy is an art form. I personally, I don't like, there's some movies or things that I watch that has, like, a rape scene or something that I find really graphic. I don't want to watch this. But I understand that it is part of art. It is part of a story that is mm. being told. Yet, when someone says a comedian, I'm like, I always view comedy in weight classes. So, 
I don't even know anything about UFC, but it's just a greater it's a greater picture for me to understand it. And I go all comedians know about UFC now because of Rogan. Yeah, like Joe, Joe Rogan's like, made all comedians. I'm a color guy. I don't listen to Joe Rogan, but like, <laughs> what I, a surprise! <laughs> a person who's not a white guy doesn't listen, listen to, to Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. <laughs> what breaking news, yeah. everyone? But like, so I go in the hands of a trained professional in your heavyweights. They, because they're not making fun of it. Mm. It's about enlightenment. Even the thing with the AIDS thing, I go like, when you say you can't joke about whatever, you're taking away people's humanity and saying that they can't laugh at situations they're in. Because I'm like, when you decide what people mm. can feel funny about or whatever, when you just start speaking on a victim or someone's behalf and going like, no, this is wrong and stuff. But I understand where people are coming from because I run a new new material night and there's every week there's some guy who's just watched Bill Burr or whatever and thinks he's the king of dark humor mm. because him and his friends on Reddit tell the most messed up jokes. And I'm like... I get why people feel that way or understand it because every comic now, every male comedian has a transgender joke, has a gay joke, has a this joke. I'm just like, everyone's just trying but to be more Chappelle. edgy. Like everyone's just trying thing. to be okay. edgier than the next person. There was this guy who performed and he was like, and that thing where we come back to where he says, he's like, oh, you guys aren't laughing because you guys just don't get dark humor. I literally got up because I was hosting and I was so fed up even and I went, dark humor is supposed to be funny. No mm. one's not laughing about what you're saying. Yo, hiding your shielding behind this thing and blaming your audience i have many dark jokes that work brilliantly but when i started them as well it was tricky to get that's where the art form comes in mm. so you you just going and saying no the audience doesn't get it you guys are just sensitive woke culture is killing everything cancel culture is killing everything i'm like no some of you guys are just using your comedic license mm. to hide the fact that you're misogynist you're bigots shame i'm but i'm also into the purple hair bombing, deal with like, yes. like that's fun also so learn to like, bomb like you do a new new material night mm. right and that's one of the things that people don't understand about comedy is that it's a workout it's a gym and even the best comics have to work out their bits yep. like you start a joke and there's very few, and it's one of the things that I find comedians try to do in South Africa is you try to be so current. It's yes. like there's a new thing that happened. Yes. Oh, let me Everyone. make a bunch of jokes about this thing Same. this week as if it's Twitter. But yeah. at the end of the day, it, like, it takes time to build a good joke, and there's very few comics in the history of comedy who can do current, current content mm -hmm. like that, where it's like this week they make jokes about it this week, and then next and week those jokes are gone and they're funny. It takes time for a joke to be funny. Like, it takes time to build it and stuff. And also, you don't have to... So, it's also like a thing of where I see my fellow colleagues just struggle with. Because, they'll, like you said, they'll see someone has a funny tweet. And what, like, everyone is funny to some degree. Every person is. So, if someone makes a viral tweet on this thing that just happened. Now, you as a comic think, oh, I have to now... Like, example, take the Matthew Booth thing that happened. Mm. I'm like, it was hilarious. Most comics were sitting there thinking, oh, I need to make a cheesecake joke now. Everyone else is making a cheesecake joke or there's these normal civilians making cheesecake. I'm like, no, you don't have to. If you have one, use it. If Why you not, do, yeah. if, you, if you think, if it genuinely comes to you, sure. If it doesn't, there's no need to rush and run. I had, and it was even a build up from another, an old joke that I haven't done in a long time when the terrorist threat thing was happening. It just came to me and it was good, but I'm like, I didn't, rush or mm. run around trying to now be relevant to trend because this is what it's all about mm. now everyone's just trying to trend everyone's just trying to get 15 minutes but comedy is not a tiktok comedy is not cloud stand-up comedy is not mm. it's an art form it takes years to perfect and i don't want 15 minutes of fame i want a long lasting career mm. like you said long lasting career is built out of a tight five your first mm. tight five is a good five minute set it took me, it genuinely takes me about maybe three months to perfect a tight five, mm. to perfect it, to go like, this is a tight five. I can put it in my pocket. I can whip it out at any time. Mm. And then your your inflictions, your timing, yes, everything, everything on all of these jokes, stage the structure, presence, everything. And it's like you have also, to work it out, yes. right? You've got a joke and it's like, oh, okay, I realize the buildup's too long. Exactly. The punchline must come earlier. It's... it's uh, it's a job. It's like an art form that it's something that has to be worked out. It's not something that just even anticipating 
the because sometimes you'll say something and you you'll get different responses. So sometimes the audience will love it. Sometimes they'll be like, or like yeah, if you say something like edgy, mm. and then you go okay. If they go this way, this is my follow up response. Mm. If they go this way, then this has to be the follow up right. response. Instead of like you said, comics are struggling to get used to bombing. That's the only way you learn that yes. is when it bombs. You'll not learn the other yeah. road for it if the joke doesn't bomb. If the joke's always just been doing good, all of a sudden one night it doesn't do good. Now you're stuck. Now you want to jump off stage. But now you want to kill yourself. Yeah. Relax. Yep. This is now an opportunity for you to go home and go, okay, when it doesn't go this way, this is what I'll say afterwards. It's a just, let's do it this way and things like that. I agree. And I think it makes a lot of sense. And it's something that you were saying as well is how all of us assume that uh, we don't distinguish between professional stand-up yes. comics and the professional um, art form or the skill yeah. of doing stand-up comedy and being funny on stage versus someone who's just funny. Yes. And you brought up Skulk Bezadenhurt, who is obviously very popular mm -hmm. at the moment. He's an actor. He does really funny videos. He blew up during the pandemic mm -hmm. with his Hello Mensa of day yes. one, whatever, whatever. He blew up because it was good content. And his stage comedy is so tight, so well performed. Mm -hmm. He has an Afrikaans set and an English, English set. set. And it's like... The guy's he's a, a pro. He's, he's a, a pro. He's the best example of a pro. pro. He's so funny on stage. And in person, it's like when people meet him, they, they can be joke. underwhelmed yeah. because he's not, because he's so funny. You think this is the funniest person alive. And in person, he's just a professional. He's, yeah. he's able to make his sets really funny because he works them out and he, he builds it, he structures it, he writes the jokes in a certain way versus being naturally funny. And I think... Maybe some people hide behind being naturally funny. I'm kicking your feet. I think but maybe he, some people hide behind yeah. being naturally funny and then they don't do the work for exactly. stage. And then they're not funny on and stage. And I think like Skog is a good example because he is naturally funny as well. But it's like a thing of you can't expect that professional, like you're not going to walk up to a professional soccer player the whole time and be like, oh, let's go play seven aside right now. And then they'll tear you apart. Though. Yeah, they will. But that's what I'm saying. Mm. But like, when we're out at a party or social uh, gathering. They've switched off. Yeah, I'm even switched off. I even switch off. I'm no, not you don't. You're funny all the time. <laughs> you're legit <laughs> I really funny. Am There's legit a lot of. Funny you actually time. are. I, like, I think of a lot of comedians and, and obviously a lot of people. I don't want to criticize anyone. I think a lot of people are very funny on stage and you're good at what you do. And I'm them. sure Name you've them. got good jokes. <laughs> <and> what, <laughs> Name them. Name I will them. all do it for Name you. Them all. But it's like. <laughs> you're not necessarily naturally funny, which is fine. Which is You know, okay. you don't have to be funny in a social situation, to, but people expect comedians to always be funny and you're lucky that you actually are funny. And they base it off that. They base it off that. They base yeah. your normal interaction and they go like, ah, oh, but that guy isn't funny. I met him at a bar. I'm like, yeah, he was playing pool. No, he's not trying to be funny. He's not trying. He's trying to score the thing. I don't know how pool works. It's like well, he's trying <laughs> to score the thing, man. Yeah. He's trying to put the thing in the hole. Yeah. That's what all guys are doing in a bar. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> See, you are. You're, you're just funny. But... That's the thing is that not everyone has to be funny all the time. And then it's like your thing of all your good looking guys. They have to work at it. Like yeah. it's hard work to be like Tinder good looking. You have yeah. to choose your photos. It can't be eight, in, eight of your friends. No. And you... It can't be a five year old photo of you with your shirt off the one time you were on juice <laughs> on holiday at the beach. Yeah. Like... Come on, guys. And like no fish. We actually we stopped on that thing. Yeah. What was it? It's the eight friends thing and the fish. The fish is a no-go. Also, like, I hate guys who, in their bios, your horrible dating experience or Tinder experience, don't tell me about it in your bio. They're like, ah. Uh, or you, like, how do you expect a girl? Guys will literally have stuff in their bio, like, all you girls are so horrible anyway and what, 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 I'll probably not even find someone. Like, not with that added, you're literally putting mm. it in your bio. I mean, we all have baggage, okay, we all have stuff. Yeah, but that's more psychology than it is strategy, right? This no, is a yeah. person who's upset, who's been yes, hurt, but that's who's so insecure, many of it. but, but then like, is desperate for interaction, interaction yes, and so doesn't you understand how to separate the two. So I think that that's, that's um, a very fearful way. So people who are insecure. Yeah. extremely insecure even if they're not hurt directly by someone or whatever they say yeah. all you girls so and so yeah because they've been turned down and they can't deal with, with rejection so they create the rejection before well, there's an opportunity happens. to be rejected uh, this is my whole thing about dick pics as well guys who send dick pics like uh, unsolicited dick pics in on instagram yeah they want to be rejected 
for something that's not their personality. Also. So there's something that's very impersonal, right? Mm. It's like, of course, she told me I'm a disgusting freak. Yeah. I sent her unsolicited dick pic. Do you know what I even think with that? For me, I, 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 I like your view. Mm. My view with it is maybe it's a bit different as a woman. You know what I think it is? It's also a power move. It is absolutely men. a power move. Because it's like, I've made I will you feel make shitty. you, I mm. made you feel awkward. I mm. made, doesn't matter, because what I found is the more you even blow up on social media mm. or whatever, when a guy sends you that, it's like a humbling thing. It's like, mm. you are still Sub- just a woman. Serving to me, you're just yeah. a woman. Mm. You're just a woman, you will look at this. I mm. will like, I don't care what you're doing. I don't mm. care what you've done it's with your exactly career. Exactly that as well. It is such a thing. And that, when I realized that even, and then also side note, some guys also just have a humiliation kink. Mm. It's it's all these three things, but then you go. I'm lucky. I got to deal with my. I wouldn't say insecurities or whatever, but I learned to not take other people's things. Mm. Whatever your issues are, I don't project them onto mm. me. So, guy sending me a dick pic has nothing to do with me. Doesn't matter it's what those them. three reasons are. But that's that's the but reality. But it takes a long time for a woman or anyone, anyone to get to a space to go that someone else's behavior. You never fully get there. You never know. You, you it's, never. It's something you, you have to continuously work on, right? And you, you have remind to, yourself. And remind yourself because it'll happen. You you fall into the immediate trap, especially things like that that are a shock. Mm. It's like this immediate shock, like, <gasps> and then you feel that immediate, and then you have to stop yourself from feeling it. You have to argue with yourself all yes, the time. You have to because your brain plays these sort of tricks was, on you, these little survival tricks, and you having, have to. Yeah. I think it was a blessing and a curse type of thing. With the I experienced a lot of it at an extreme amount at a young age when I had my big boobs mm. so it was like i had a picture i posted a picture of me because remember this is my body it's normal to me mm. i posted a picture on instagram i wasn't even big then whatever like i had like maybe two thousand followers three th- nothing nothing hectic i was not even i just basically started stand up and then someone takes that picture i'm not on reddit goes and puts it on reddit now there's a whole there's thousands of comments on my body on who i am mm. projecting what i do all these things and i was like i was still young and stand up and they're saying she sucks what 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 i'm like i i'm still figuring this stuff out i'm not being allowed to tr- i was i went through a whole spectrum of these things and they learned that i had two choices at that moment because if i let one comment in I have mm. to let all of them in because mm. there were so many. And I'm like, but what is the point of this? Like, I'm I'm just going to go into a self pit of despair. Mm. So that taught me very quickly to just that conversation, to go and have that conversation and go like, hey, now I'm so much better at it because like even when I post a video of stand-up or someone hates it, I'll have that moment quickly where I feel bad. I'm like, maybe you do suck at this. And then you go, no. And then you gather yourself quickly. And my response to it even is so... Wouldn't even say nonchalant, but like it's water off of a duck's back. Mm. So me and my friend Gukle, who's been on the podcast a lot of times, we're looking at another podcast coming up soon. Uh, we discussed this in depth in one of the previous episodes, and it's this issue of being honest with yourself. And it's one of the most difficult skills to learn from a psychological standpoint, for your own mental health standpoint, is to be honest with yourself. And it's so extremely difficult because you actually have so many emotional hang-ups over yourself as an individual person. Human beings, we're naturally self-obsessed. Mm. Uh, everything, every action that someone else does, uh, we look at that re- action that they have in a reflection of ourselves, how it reflects or attains to us, yeah. or pertains rather to us. Yeah. We're all and the main character syndrome. Exactly. And it, it's because it's, it's a natural response, it's a natural brain activity. And I think... The key is, and it's an extremely difficult skill, is honesty. So uh, don't read comments, especially when you're a, a big enough act. That's the advice, right? When you're mm. when you're big enough, that social media, this hateful yes. place that is full of comments, it's like, don't read the comments. But sometimes read. comments can be, and criticism can, can be, be a I, real true about reflection. Say. There's a lot so, of, especially mm. in South African media, oh, sorry to interject there, especially with like, our influences and stuff and things and I'm like they'll go like oh don't pay attention to the haters I'm like guys pay a little pay a little yeah Hear what just is do it honestly honestly yes thing. and like you said evaluate your feelings one of the biggest things I did this year was like be even honest about my negative emotions instead of pretending they don't exist like example if I get I, I experience it with career very much so I'll be like something happens like a project will happen and I'll be like oh why wasn't I 
chosen for this. I'm feeling jealous about this and what. I'm like, it's okay. Feel, don't, don't act like you're not jealous about mm. this. And then I go, okay, but then, really, why are you jealous? And then when I reevaluate and I go, oh, it's just because I'm feeling excluded. Do you even care about this thing? Like, when, like example, with the right. roast or like roast comedy. I like roasting, I like banter, but I'm like, I'm not a roast comedian. So I'm like, if I'm not chosen for a roast battle or writing for a roast, I'm like, why would you? You don't care about this thing. Mm. This, isn't, this isn't your dream. It's a dream of people adjacent to you. So it's now started feeling like it's something you should want. So that's okay to because feel. Because of when the you, scale of yes, it. Yes, right. mm. but then you step back and when you allow yourself to feel those negative emotions, then you can get down to why it's making you feel that way and solve it and move on. Even narcissism, people go like, oh, I'm not narcissistic or what, what, what. I'm like, I am narcissistic because narcissism is part of my job. I have to go on stage every night and convince a room full of people who have never met me that I'm the funniest person in the room. So I'm, I'm also humble. I can be all those things. Everything is just how you deal with your emotions and keep it in check. Mm. I ha you just have to keep it in check and know where you always are. It's balance. It's everything is, everything is balance. People like hate narcissism. Like narcissism is the only thing killing my life, keeping me alive. The only reason I haven't killed myself is because I genuinely believe I'm the best human being ever and I'm way more special than the rest of you. I truly believe that. And that was the Malcolm Martin's revolution. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 no, you're right. I think, yeah, the, the key, again, is is the honesty, is that being able to remove your, your personal hang-ups from the situation and look at a set of comments and be like, oh, this person is hateful because they probably have some racism yes. within themselves that they inherited, like they genetically, they inherited people, racism. You guys just be inheriting so many weird things. We inherited like Ford, Ford it's Mustangs. It's not my fault. Ford Mustangs and races. <laughs> That's what we inherit. <laughs> and in his last will and testament, <laughs> Marco <laughs> Senior leaves leaves onto <laughs> land, <A> land, land, <laughs> and <laughs> land somewhere. Land somewhere. I've got like land somewhere. <laughs> somewhere I've inherited. I don't know where it is, but I've inherited land somewhere. Yeah. And it's then the, also the racism. racism. <laughs> 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 it's just the <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I'm not racist because I watch French cinema. Like, it excuses, like, I can say racist things, but because I watch French, because I wear this beanie yeah. and I shoot on film, I'm not a racist. I'm not a racist. You are a douchebag, though. <laughs> Which I think is, at some points, is way worse. <laughs> it's way worse than being a racist. racist. Yeah, I'd rather get, deal with the racists than deal with a douchebag. I don't know what I would rather deal with. I'd rather deal with neither. Yeah, you'd. Uh, but, yeah, when you look at comments and you, you, you can basically pick out what's happening with each individual person and then the criticism doesn't necessarily always mean it's them. Sometimes the criticism is real and you're like, you know what, this person said, uh, you're funny, you know, we, like in a sarcastic way where you're not. It's like, shit, how did I deliver this wrong that it actually wasn't funny? Maybe there is something wrong with, no, with how this works. It's happened you know, to it's like me as criticism. well. Like, I've said some things, especially in my early career and stuff, where I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. And learning and growing from that, but that's also why it is important, I think, for anyone in an entertainment space. You always need people who are honest with you in your close circle. Because they'll tell you, there's so many times, you know when you see someone post something mm -hmm. and you're like, where's this person's friends? I'm like, where are your friends, dude? Like, I'm not talking mm -hmm. about the people you hang out with. I'm talking about, even with, you'll see... Like my male comedian friends, if they post something or do something that I'm like, I'm like, I call them immediately and I'm like, delete that now. Mm, don't I'll, be stupid. I'll, yeah, I'll explain it to you later in depth, but for now, go delete that right now. Mm. You need those people in your life. You need them who will go. Mm. And if you don't want to listen, that's your story. Then that's a different chat. That is a completely different chat. It's also why I like comedy and I always tell audience members or people who are about to go online or whatever. If you, especially if it's South Africa, South mm. African comedians, I can only speak from that perspective. If I tell a joke that's not for you or whatever you think is problematic or things, we are supposed to be very open. So I know from my perspective as a comedian and a lot of others, if you come to me personally and have a talk, I will listen. I will listen. 
and we can learn and we can grow and we can help and we can find a way to make it work. But there's also times where I'm like, don't come project your own personal things onto my, like I did a joke once and it was like, this girl was like, she went on a whole rant. She blocked me. Every, and that's what I'm saying. She didn't message me directly. She didn't what have the, the joke. I said Rue from um, Euphoria, right? I haven't no, seen yeah. it. But anyway, I said, you would have loved Tuck. She's a drug addict. And then this chick blocks <laughs> me and like goes on a rant about how it's so funny. You guys think it's so funny. Comedians think it's so funny unless you... It's funny until you have a family member and what, what, what. And I'm like, that's what, but then I'm going like, if you had the conversation with me, you would know. You, like, she was like, her sister is a drug addict. Drug addict, addict yeah. Like, half my family is drug addicts. I'm, make, I'm not speaking from a place of not knowing mm. anything about this. And it's back to the topic where but I go. Even if you even if you were, it's social commentary, and right? Also, Again, that is actually where the comedian is. Everyone licenses. has stuff that is going to trigger them. Right. But I'm like, you can't just read a trigger word and get triggered and then just, the world doesn't live like that. You can't live in a bubble where someone's not mm. going to bring up something that makes you feel a certain way. Mm. It's unfortunately hard because I go like, people will while about something like that and then someone will make a joke about this and that's okay versus that. And I'm like, I told my took up aunt that joke. She loves it. That's not even my worst one. I have so many more. <laughs> she loves <laughs> it so much. Because that's what I'm saying. You also take away from human beings to be what makes people mistake laughter as an emotion instead of a reaction. Laughter and crying are reactions. Happiness, sadness, those are emotions. I can laugh and still be in the shittiest situation in my life. I, it's laughing is a human. Unfortunately, women do find themselves in that situation exactly. so often. Is when you're uncomfortable, you laugh. Right? Laughing mm. is a human reaction. It is mm. also a release. It's a release of those emotions and things inside. We just automatically attached it mm. to happier but also your, emotions. Your joke, you can cry and be happy. Your joke is funny. It's a funny joke. It doesn't mean that you think that Less that of actress or the character from that show should go and do Turk. Yes, or I'm making it, fun of, or I'm actively looking out to Copa and making them the butt of every one of right. my jokes. I'm bringing in... But that it's also like, it's in the same way of making fun of someone for having a big nose or funny looking eyes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's not, you're, you're insensitive in yeah. a way. But it's funny. You can look at human beings' flaws and make a joke I about would, it. I would argue that one because that's physical. That's, that's physical. Fine. Make fun of a big that's nose. Physical. It's funny. But for me, it's like when I speak about even drugs, because I do do Are you saying because it. it's not a choice and like yes. drug addiction's a choice? It's not. No, drug addiction is not a choice. What I'm trying to say is I'm bringing social awareness mm. to it. If you sit, and that's what I always tell people, people online, we live in a short attention span area, like era. So I'm like, stand-up comedy, people don't even finish listening to a joke before they react. Mm. Like, listen to the set piece of work and art. See where I'm going with this. Then at the end, tell me. But I have people sometimes, like, they will walk up, get up halfway through someone's set, and I'm like, sit through it. I am a professional hater, so I know this. I hate, I love hating on things. But I will finish a thing before I hate it. I watched six seasons of Big Bang Theory before I knew it was dog shit, before I officially declared it dog shit. Because I like to be an educated hater. I've seen every Batman movie. I've read all the comics the to know that Bruce Wayne is the shittiest person alive. I don't just hate from nowhere. Do you think that Bruce Wayne, with his unbelievable wealth, rather than investing in a Batmobile, could have could, solved all the poverty could, issues could, in that could, city could, and then go. there would be no crime? All he had to do was stabilize the economy. That's all That's he had to all do. He needed. Instead, That's he got it. into a Halloween costume and runs around beating ATM robbers up. It's good fun, though. Like, let's be honest. Of course, white man, you think that's let's a great idea. Let's be honest. That's a great let's idea. Of course you think that's idea. a right idea. <laughs> <laughs> of course you like what Bruce you know, Wayne is South doing. South Africa needs a black man. <laughs> like all of the money that we've got in South Africa, instead of it going into Gupta this pockets. This is South Africa. You know what, the Batman's going to get hijacked. Let's be honest. Now, now Batman's going to get hijacked. Because he doesn't carry a gun. No, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's gonna, Batman's going to get hijacked, dog. <laughs> Do you think, like, because the Guptas stole so much money from this country, mm. like, do you think one of the Guptas should, should be Batman? A... Like, we should have a Gupta signal for this guy when there's some crime going on. And then, like, the Gupta mobile comes <laughs> out and, and some, like, Gupta vigilante. And 
Am but I allowed to make that joke? Yeah, you, I'm not you, allowed to no, make you, that joke. No, you treated no. it lightly. You treated it lightly. You almost, you almost were not allowed. What to Gupta Batman? No, no, no. You were fine. You were fine. You were fine. You, you. Were where, where would have the line crossed? The line would have crossed if you started explaining what would have been the sign. Then uh, that, then that, you see? Like if it, if it was Don't like do it. Don't do the joke. <laughs> Don't do the fucking I'm gonna joke. Save you. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm telling you not to do the joke. I thought you were going to say stop. describe the automobile, the car. <laughs> like if there's You're a also that, that Stop. Design. Don't do the joke. Marco, don't do the joke. No, I won't do the joke. <laughs> don't Adam Casavellos yourself, bro. So, so the, where you can go is that you giving people advice must have increased a lot because now you have purple hair and a nose ring. So like now you can like really give people a lot of advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like mm, your chakras. Look, look how I nearly made a joke, and now you're crossing your arms. Like, I don't like, want that. that I don't want that racist ass energy coming in. So I'm closing off my fucking chakras to this racist as Gupta Batman <laughs> Gupta Mobile joke. Also, that I hear you, but like, there's so many people that have stolen in South Africa that now you'd have like eight Batman families. <laughs> <laughs> Like every, <laughs> so many families of Batman. Yeah, this is yeah. just like, <laughs> like. Just so many. Just so many. You'd have so many Batmans Do you think, running around. So here's where the, where the Gupta Mobile joke <laughs> could come, up, come in. I like, so. Please, the views expressed by the podcast are not the views of Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You'll see how now, now it's actually South African comedies when you say that the car needs to be pothole proof. Somehow, because there, you see, see there's the joke. Safe. You see, safe. it's safe. 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 It's something that all of us safe. struggle with together. You had us on edge, like, hey, 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 hey. And then you're like, oh, hey, safe. safe potholes. Spottles. There you go. We all like potholes. Like if, if you can figure out <laughs> how to make all of these South African tenderpreneur Batman <laughs> guys, <laughs> if you can give them all a car that can handle the potholes and they can go fight crime. Yeah. Then, so then we're winning. Do you know they don't actually need cars because to fight crime in South Africa, they just need to talk to their parents. <laughs> 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 Your dad. Dad, uh -uh. please stop stealing. S please stop. stop uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> dad, enough now. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All Ramaphosa's children would have to do is just take the money out of the, m out of the mm, matches. Careful. Is it? There's white people who listen to this. Oh, <laughs> we, you know, we still like Ramaphosa a little oh, bit. Oh, do you now. guys? Still, oh, yeah, because yeah, he ran like, on the promenade. Yeah, I remember. You that. Ran, you remember the that? Prom, that the promenade. He's like, like hey. he's just like us. He's just like us. Just we like run us. the prom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to come to the DA? Like <laughs> so, come. Yes. We know <laughs> if he doesn't like you. Come. We like you. We want. So we like we you. Want. It's so funny. We I've want. Been, I've been looking at all the political options of people to vote for. And I'm like, I won't even lie. I'm thinking I'm just going to vote for the Dacha party. It feels like we we're in well America just, again. Let's What's just be high I don't even smoke no, weed like that. No, this feels like right. Biden, Trump. Seriously, like who? Who? Why? Why are those the two options? Like, All those I people. I mean, there are other give... options. But I'm like, everyone is so horrible. I'm like, yeah. can't we just be mm. single as a country? I know. What would happen? What would happen if we just, hypothetically, if we just mm. didn't have president or a political party for a while? Well, it's not like they, they're running infrastructure development or anything. So it's like, we're not going to lose out, out there. Much. Look, the like a, the roads are being thing. fixed by the guy. Like there's a pothole in front of your house and the guy just comes from Builder's Warehouse on yes. the weekend with some yes. cement and fixes it himself. So like, yeah. We're doing it anyway. Anyway. We, we South are Africa's already, practically already. We are. It's like, like no, do you know what we are? <laughs> We're like those kids whose parents aren't divorced. But yeah. they, they, they don't live in the same house. Mm, tread, We're like that. Tread lightly. Is it? Are they also now you're not offensive you, to white people. Not you, you, now you're offensive you. <laughs> to white people. Like Sorry, you can, white people. You know? <laughs> Sorry, white people. That's, that's an offensive. I loved, I loved goldfish. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Thank you, white South Africans, goldfish. for giving us goldfish. Goldfish? <laughs> I love goldfish. You guys really did a good job there. Mm, anything with like a saxophone has to be like. <laughs> Even though jazz is such a thing for like black people oh, and also people, thank you for Opi Kopi. Opi Kopi. Nice one. White people. Woo! No, but you see, I'm I'm this white people, the beanie and the shirt. Yeah. So it's not Opi Kopi white people. That's no. Afrikaans. I'm white people like goldfish. You want. White be. You want. I'm white. Be. You want. I'm, I'm gonna go hot lion's head. <laughs> <laughs> In December. <laughs> Kedi Zemba boss, bruh. <laughs> 
But seriously, that's the sort of thing that white people take personally because their mom and dad don't like live in the same house, but they're still married. That's the thing. Now you tr- you see the thing but is that's very also, offensive. It's not just them. Then that's something we can all relate on because colored people do that and black people do that. You see, we're solving racism. We're solving racism. Yay! It's kind of like when Bruno went to go negotiate peace talks in the Middle East between Bruno Mars. No, Bruno like. <laughs> Borat Bruno. Oh. Like the TV show, did you watch the movie uh, Bruno? I watched Borat. He was Borat. this gay Austrian. Oh, the, the white guy. The yeah, blonde guy. Yeah, he's a blonde I remember it was gay like a, Austrian it felt TV like presenter. A fever dream. <laughs> that w- like as, this. as a Sasha Baron Cohen movie yes, would feel like as wild. As <laughs> but he goes and he negotiates with like the Israelis and Hamas. And he's basically saying, why I don't you Hamas. guys like hummus? Oh. And then he's like, you're talking about hummus. hummus yeah. And then he's like, we both... Eat. And then he's like touching their hands and like making them sing peace songs and whatever. It's wild. It's a wild ride. <laughs> Without actually understanding the real problems of people. True. How many of us actually do though? Yeah. Maybe you comedians understand the real we problems so of people. I think, I think that's, that's... You guys do have a deeper understanding of the social ills that weigh heavily upon us. I'm like, I'm 27. And I definitely... Just a whole, you know, when Waylene was saying she was narcissistic earlier, here is your evidence because she's going to say something as if she knows something extremely profound at only the age of 27. Not Stay f- extremely profound, Tune in but, now. but it's a thing of, I think about someone who has, outside of my own personal life, my own personal life is like a movie, but. With comedy. What, what comedy, comedy like has... French cinema? No, it, the genre keeps changing. Right now it feels <laughs> like a horror. Okay. Um, okay, no, but go But on. in comparison to someone, I thought about it like a year or two ago. There's people who, when they're done with school, they study, right? And then they go work in a job, which there's nothing wrong with it. Hmm. But they work with those same people for the next 20 years. They maybe get 30 vacation days a year type of thing. They're working towards retirement and stuff. At 27, someone that's lived a life like that, maybe at 60, but at 27, I've met or seen so many things that that person has not seen. I'm not saying I'm Just not taking away from. Just because your career hasn't limited you to, to a cubicle yeah, and I'm also, for a lot of your hours. Even in terms of, I'm not just traveling for fun, if that makes sense. When I go to new cities or whatever to do comedy, I'm meeting the people there. I'm submerging mm. into their world. And when you get that perspective, and you see, like, this is how people live here. This is how people live here. This is, it It changes your view and things. And you go, there's so many things we all agree on that we don't even know we agree on. And that's the beauty of stand-up. Because for me, oh, that's my main goal with stand-up, my stand-up. I like to take maybe my experiences, things I've been through, and especially in a country in South Africa, we're all suffering, we're all struggling in some type of way. And I go... This is my experience. Mm. How many of you can relate to it? A lot. How many of you can, even if you don't relate, can empathize, can Mm. feel? And at the end of my set, all I want us to be, if we're in a room of 50 people or a room of 100 people or a room of 10 people, from the beginning of my set to the, versus at the end, I all just want us to feel like one. Mm. Because this life is lonely. No one, no one prepares you. There's a lot of things no one prepares you for as an adult. I work with a lot of people. I have a lot of friends. I am loved. I'm very loved. But there's a vital part of being an adult no one tells you about. It's lonely. There are certain things you think you feel alone. There are certain things you don't know how to tell other people. And it makes a difference. Even for me, I don't just do it for the audience. When I go on stage and I say, hey, I felt this way today. And the audience goes, I also sometimes feel that way. In that moment, I don't feel lonely either. They don't feel lonely. Just for that one brief little moment, we have that. And I think that's a beautiful thing. That, to me, is the magic of stand-up, is the magic of what we do and why I would love to do this for the rest of my life. I can't think of money aside, every, all the other things aside. Mm. That's why I don't think I'll ever quit comedy because that adult life is so I talk to my parents the older I've gotten with my relationship with my mother especially and her being more honest with me and I see that I'm like even this person that I thought I was in their life and filled life and joy I mean come on I was her child I was like Mm. amazing person to have around in the house but I'm like she still felt alone 
so many times in a house full of people with a family in a great house. And you go, but why would you feel that way? People have amazing, people are confused as to people who have money and great jobs and stuff still kill themselves. They still feel lonely. And they don't know how to say it. I think what I picked up from what you're saying is the shared trauma of South Africans. It's something mm. uh, that we've discussed on podcasts before is that there's great crimes that happened in South Africa in our recent history and then you have the perpetuators of those crimes there and their descendants carry the guilt, guilt. of those crimes mm -hmm. and then you have the sufferers of those crimes and their descendants carry the trauma and of then that. you've got this shared trauma that South Africans have and if you can use that trauma as a unification mm -hmm. tool instead of a separation Ration tool. tool yes that's because the thing, that's the right? thing and that's what you're using your comedy for because you like can do it both ways you can do, you it, can both do ways. it both ways yeah. i can turn the room now against like you said some perpetuators or what and mm. we can now mm. feel angry yes or we can because the craziest thing i was talking to my landlord about this and it's like because we went the electricity there was a power outage and we had work what to a do surprise what, what a surprise but we went there and we're like the hurtful thing is like i'm from namibia I don't think I could live anywhere else on the African continent except Johannesburg. It is the place I feel the most at home. It's the place I feel the most African. I love it here. And that's the hard part as well because there's so much trauma and struggle here, but the good parts are also so amazing. I've mm. traveled the world. I've seen the other things. I'm like, there's no place that beats it. But I'm a woman. I'm single. I live alone. I can't go for a job without wondering mm. if I'm going to die or not. That's how deep it is. Mm. I, every time I get in an Uber, I'm like, this could be it. <laughs> this, is, this is the one. <laughs> and I'm like... I don't know. It's not a bolt. <laughs> <laughs> but... It's those realities. It's like I, I'm loving my job right now. I'm loving mm. what I do. I can't, I'm a content creator. If the electricity's out, how am I supposed to record, upload my things? There's like these constant things that... Annoyances. Annoyances and but struggles that make it hard. Mm. And I'm like, financially, I was having a chat with my parents. I make more money now than my parents made together at like 30. You know, dual income, mm. half. But it's only eighty percent of your rent. I can't. Fuck, job is expensive. I can't. To live. I can't do anything. Mm. I can't like. It's very I don't different. have any money. Twenty twenty two is so different to nineteen ninety four. No, no, and I'm like, I do, yeah. and the guilt we carry as millennials and stuff is like, like yesterday I went and just spoiled myself a little, and when I say spoiled a little, I mean like a little bit, and I felt so guilty because I'm like, oh, this money is supposed to go. You're being so irresponsible mm. with your finances and stuff, but I'm like, we work so hard. I was like. I want to get an extra job. I'm like, where's the time for this extra job? It's not that you don't want it. You. It's also what does that extra job take away exactly. from what you're trying to build in your career? It's exactly. very different to like an office job where you have a set salary, whatever, and you have to commit these many yeah. hours. And then you know that any hours beyond that, that you commit to something mm. else are those hours. Whereas if you put mm. energy Stand up into takes something everything. Like, yeah. Stand up when you're it's building. A very, it's a very needy, I call her my neediest girlfriend. The needy girlfriend. Who's Stand your up. second neediest girlfriend? You. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <But> true. <laughs> it's Simi. <laughs> <laughs> this actually brings me back to the joke I wanted to tell when you were talking about everyone having to share trauma and everything. Mm. I was going to say that why don't you just phone your family psychologist for a telephone consultation? Because it would have like... Yeah. Played on the white boy thing. Oh, yeah. But I don't have a family psychologist, so I wouldn't even know. Oh, you're one of the broke ones. I'm one of the <laughs> broke ones. But I dress like one of the ones who have money. Yeah. The, the key the is dressing like you yeah, don't have, have money. money. Then and you then know. you know like this. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like, I love how on Instagram and stuff, like, real rich girl aesthetic is not like Balenciaga uh, bags uh. and stuff. The rich, rich girls on Instagram, they're posting like a picture of a sewer rat. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. it's like New York, like they're yeah, in Manhattan. Manhattan, yeah. Like living in yeah. <laughs> the death of hedge funds. <laughs> like, like they'll wear a plain white, and you're like, I swear I've seen that white top at Mr. Yeah. Price, but you haven't. You haven't, no. <laughs> you <laughs> but haven't. it's the same, <laughs> it's plain, but it's not Mr. Price. It's not Mr. Price. Mm, but it, it doesn't say Moschino all yeah. across the front either. Yes. Like it's <laughs> yes. like, no, no, you're not no, seeing. No. <laughs> you're not seeing. 
<laughs> like everything's subtle. It's so true. It's, it's like, like rich yeah. people don't they look. They wear tote bags. Color. Yeah. They wear, she's, she's carrying around a tote bag. It's an expensive one. It's an it's expensive not. one. But it's also like, it's what she's wearing. What What's that um, sandals brand? Birkenstocks. Birkenstocks. She's wearing Birkenstocks. Yo. I know this. Day. I know what to look for. And I'm like, mm. everyone's like, oh, that's a girl with my own. I'm like, guys, no, let me teach you. Let me let show me teach you. you. Let me show you who she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've definitely got that rich boy aesthetic going on, yeah. Like, I just need vintage camera in the film. Yeah, that's what and you need. And to talk more about French cinema. <laughs> Speaking of cinema, we were talking about like Marvel movies and mm -hmm. I was explaining to you why I hate fucking Marvel movies. Yeah, because you're well, not a like douchebag. Because I'm a douchebag, yeah. I think my biggest thing is one was the like adulteration of art by the Chinese politics, mm. right? So the, the still rife communism of China influences... Yeah. Ooh, I'm, like, I'm pretending to know about politics. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just Ooh, yeah. politics bad. Mm. Politics good. Yeah. So now we politics bad. Now. Is it okay. politics bad? Okay. Politics, politics bad. bad. Yeah. 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 Okay. But they change what you're allowed to produce as art mm. because the Chinese market's so important to these big cool. movie houses, the big picture houses of of Hollywood. The Chinese market's so important to them that they allow them to determine what is art and what is permissible. Mm. And I'm what like, okay, I'm not going to ascribe to it. I want people's art completely unadulterated. Your art must be your art. Mm. And for those large-scale, very expensive, popular movies, they can't do that because the Chinese market's too important to the bottom line. So then it changes so much of what they do. And I remember flying on a plane to Hong Kong Mm. and sitting on to that plane. To go stop the Chinese people. To go stop it. Okay, I was yeah. on my way there to okay. stop it. <laughs> I was trying to save cinema with my beanie. <laughs> you and your beanie <laughs> and your camera. Me and my beanie and my camera. We were going to China <laughs> to stop, to save cinema. <coughs> this sounds like, uh, what's his name? He always does movies with Seth Rogen. No, not Zach Galifianakis. James Franco. James Franco. It's like... Wanna be like James Franco, like a less handsome James Franco, but in a movie going to save Sin less less everything <laughs> than James Franco, which sort of sounds like also Dave Franco. Less, also, also oh, less allegations no. than James Franco. So, there's a win. <laughs> a win. Like, what are the allegations on James oh, Franco? I don't even know. I don't. Uh, all these guys have allegations. Of course, that's Let's standard. just assume. Just but I think I've heard some. Like, okay. it's so hard to keep up with who's a rapist, who's not a rapist. Who's it's Hollywood, who's everyone, is. everyone is. Everyone is. It's the new in thing. Yeah. Like, are you... You're Harvey not Weinstein's even... not yeah. there alone. Like, like yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Are you even an A-list celebrity if you haven't sexually harassed? Someone. Someone. Yeah. Like, multiple someone. Like, I even like... That's why I'll never be famous. I have not assaulted anyone yet. Uh, uh, what's yet. his name? House of Cards. Joking. <laughs> What's his name? The very famous actor House of Cards and stuff. Oh, uh, Kevin Spacey. Kevin. Kevin Spacey. And then he's excusing like, I'm gay. I'm gay. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> that's not how it works. I'm gay. <laughs> 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 Look, he's got like, the... Like, that's not how it I'm works. I'm gay. I'm gay. <laughs> okay. Another straight white man who's been thinking, I'm, I'm gay. gay. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Spacey. But... Where was I? Oh, James Franco. Mm. Yeah, I was I was heading over to try and, and save cinema, cinema for the world. It's actually sounding more and more like a good movie. It is. Actually. Like a buddy comedy. Or f French cinema. Or <laughs> just all shot in black and white. <laughs> all of it. But um, there were so many good films on the plane, like mm. f for the options to watch. And some of them were quite dramatic and almost artsy in a way. Mm. But there were a lot of them. And they were very compelling and they were good stories. And I thought the people who created this art must be very proud of this work because it's almost independent. It's still made by movie houses and stuff, but you just look at all the actors who played in it and you think to yourself, oh, this is almost like a passion project for yes. all of these people. And then I just like had a look around the plane and saw what everyone was, and everyone's fucking watching the Avengers. And I'm thinking to myself, guys, is this the best use of your time to watch the Avengers? Really? Yes. Like, like find something else along that watch list. The watch the Avengers. But um, I can understand. So, like, I've been a Marvel superhero, specifically Spider-Man fan, like since I was six. Mm. I remember when the first one came out and everything? It was it blew my mind. With 
what? Uh, Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. He was so and good. Yeah, uh, that's a different argument. Uh, but I underst- I fully understand why it is a niche type of thing as well that has just also exploded. Mm. And yes, it's like it's. I think everything has a good bad side type of thing. There's so many things they have lost, but there's so many things like right now currently where Marvel's in its phase four, which a lot of people don't understand. And I'm like, this is phase four. You can't look for phase one or two type of Marvel. Those don't exist anymore. They've moved on. They're branched out. And it's like everything is taking a different kind of direction. So you have to ask yourself, it's like, am I, am I going here? Like the movies, example, let's look at the three big Marvel movies that came out this year. They all go in such different directions. So it's like, you can't just be like, I hate what Marvel movies. What are the three movies. Marvel movies this year? So... Doctor Strange, Multiverse of the Universe. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cucumber Snitch. Um, <laughs> and then Thor, Love and Thunder. And then now Wakanda. Wakanda Forever. So, also the directs, because that's why they, they went proper phase four. They split up. The, the, the Marvel cinematic experience has been split up. So, if you're into this type of genre, this type of thing... You're not really gonna like the other ones, or you. I like all of them, but I'm, I understand that certain people like certain things. Now you're looking for that still like Avengers feel from Marvel, which is which the is action a of, and, and a like, lot of which, CGI which is, and explosions which is and whatever. Well, right? But I'm like, and also the, the 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 feels of the movie were the same, if that makes sense. The earlier or Phase Three and Two specifically, but now that doesn't exist anymore. Everything is kind of branched out this way, so it's like. There's some things I don't even like. Like, I didn't like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's not to say it's bad. It's just like I didn't like it because it's gone in a different direction. But, sorry. And they're using different directors with those styles incorporated. Like, a lot of people didn't like Thor, Love, and Thunder. But I'm like, that is classic Taika Waititi. It's classic. He did. If you're not into his work, you will not like it. From the get-go, doesn't matter what was going to happen. And... But that's the route that Thor is taking. And then you've got the Wakanda that's going into a more feminine, um, directed version, which I I love. I love that. And I think it's brilliant as well. And then you had the Doctor Strange, which is a Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi is known for horror. He's known for scary. He's known for dark. So if you don't like that, you're not going to like where that version's going. Mm. Because Wanda's a full-on supervillain in that one. So I'm like, and not like suddenly, like extremely. So I'm like, if you don't like that direction, you're not gonna like it. Which I find cool because I'm like, I like that it's spreading out, that it's going its own ways and things. I'm like, we also live in a world where things have changed so much. I love comic books, I loved reading books and things, but I'm like, you can't keep holding on to like, oh, but they changed so much of it. I'm like, we live in a world where people are doing that now. It's things have changed. So it's like you either accept what you like and you move forward with it, but complaining or like hating just for the sake of it. Like I said, I'm a professional hater, but mm. I just don't like when people just hate generally. You must hate with facts. Well, anyone who's <laughs> listening to this or watching this must know how much I love you, Aileen, because <laughs> you're the only person I'd let speak that long about fucking Marvel movies <laughs> on my fucking podcast. I'll tell you that now. There's nothing I fucking care less for <laughs> than a fucking Marvel movie. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> for someone who hates Quentin Tarantino as much as he does, I'll still fucking watch Quentin Tarantino movies oh, over uh, fucking Marvel movies. I mean, more like... Can I, be, can I be honest about Quentin Tarantino? Yeah. It's one of those things where if something is so bad, you don't care for it. There's mm. no room for hate. But when something's good but bad... Oh, I, I hear then what you Then you've got like room yes. for hate where's, because where's you're, like you get invested enough to build up some sort of passion yeah. about something. And I think Tarantino is so close to being incredible. And then he misses the mark just... For me, sometimes. like I don't like Tarantino because I think that he's self-indulgent and oh, I think he's arrogant and I think 100%. that he does things on purpose just to say fuck you to his audience yes. and to his bosses and to the executives. To whatever. say, I am he, Quentin Tarantino. I am Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. I will get us this close to greatness, but I will mess but with I'll it. But I'll put Western music in a fucking World War II yeah. movie in France. Because I want and to. Because I want to. Because I'm, I'm Tarantino. Tarantino. And Which is so funny you bring it up. And it's like that doesn't 
it doesn't expand on your story. It doesn't motivate. It doesn't make your production you know better. It makes it worse. And then you're like, but it's fine because I'm Tarantino. Do you know what's so funny that you who, who you bring up Quentin Tarantino does that? You know someone who does that but not on purpose is Ryan Murphy. He almost always gets it right and then he messes mm. up one thing but not because he's like selfish. I think he genuinely just doesn't, like, he's just like, it was almost there and then it goes, like, glee or whatever. It's like, it's almost there. It's almost there. And then it's like, Raylene, thank you so much for joining me. This has been an episode of the Mark and Martin's Revolution. This was Remember- lots of fun. This was lots of fun. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. I almost didn't let you say thank you. Yeah, almost I was went like, straight to I was like, like, yeah, wow, I was like, let me say thank I'm you. I'm not rude. Thank you for having me. I'm Raylene, aka Maybe It's Waybeline. Oh yeah, where can people find you? Maybe It's Waybeline on all social media platforms or they can just follow me home from here. The one <laughs> <laughs> Some people will, don't worry. <laughs> They're just probably not listeners because there's not enough listeners to <laughs> <make> that <laughs> This has been an episode of the Mark Martin's Revolution. Remember to visit vodcasttv.com forward slash revolution now to get yourself a discount on your first episode of a podcast or podcast series. For me, for now, it's goodbye.